Igor Coelho started playing badminton when he was six on an outdoor court made of asphalt and alongside children playing barefoot. Coelho's early badminton experience was on a court which his father, Sebastião Dias de Oliveira, built himself just beside their house in Chacrinha, a favela on the western outskirts of Rio de Janeiro. In 2007, a visit from Canadian Olympian Charmaine Reed inspired the boy from Brazil to dream big. At the 2016 Rio Olympics, Goylio rose to prominence as the host nation's poster boy for badminton, and this year he made the last 16 of the World Championships. Charmaine Reed, who is in Nanjing as a television commentator, was delighted to witness the success of Igor Coelho, the boy she had inspired. So Igor, great to see you here. I first time meeting you was back in 2007 after the Pan Am Games. I know your father for many years prior to that. And then after the Pan Am Games, I went to visit you in, in your favelas. Do you remember? Yes, I remember, 11 years old. Uh, you were the first um, Olympic player I ever see, and I was looking like, uh, really like, wow. Oh, it's incredible, because I mean, you remember bare feet. You played in bare feet when I first saw you in 2007 in flip-flops, yeah. and we were yeah. getting beat by people <laughs> in flip-flops, but really it's come a long way, and it's because of your dad, your, his vision of building these courts on your, on your house. It's in your house, it's in your backyard. First, uh, I really like what my father do, and when uh, I finish my career, I really want to be like him, to help the kids to change lives. Uh, he saves many, many lives. So not, he not just makes champions in badminton, but uh, champions in life. I'm really proud of my father, yeah. I can say this. Uh, he, he did this first by himself, yes. yeah. and then after uh, people's uh, help him. The favelas, it's a tough life. People are not sure what the favelas are, but you live in Rio. Can you tell about what happens in the slums? Actually, it's, there is two ways in the favelas. The bad way, uh, the traffic, the drugs. I had uh, uh, many friends who died because of this life. And uh, the good way, like teachers, Olympics athletes, pilots, basically it's this. I don't think people realize Badminton saves these kids. Yeah. It gives them an out, the drugs, the, the stealing and that. It really, really helps them. It Thanks. can change people's lives. I think uh, the, the sports change life. They get uh, education. They have many problems in home and uh, mm -hmm. badminton. We, use, we, have, uh, we have to play with, with, with each other. It's come, uh, respect. Mm -hmm. uh, there is rules. So have to be disciplined, otherwise you, you don't get good results. So when they go out of the sport, even if they don't become a professional uh, badminton player, they can be uh, teach, for example, Renata. Yes. It's, all, uh, it's yeah. a good example. She, she teach another kids to be like her. She was a really good player before, yes. and now she teach uh, other kids. And your dad took care of her. I remember uh, playing and against her, and, and she couldn't hear very well. Yeah. Deaf, and he really took her under the wing. And I remember saying, because she would hit really hard, and it's because you guys played outside. There was no roof. Yeah. There was no the roof, and she's playing in Brazil Open. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she was actually three years number one in Brazil. Yes. Uh, she got uh, one tr trophy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, without uh, any conditions. And people don't realize how it started. There was no roof when you first started. I remember going there, there was only one court, dusty and, and rough. And yeah. now you have four courts. 2008. Uh, the Foundation de Cato came and put one good floor and uh, also Artengo uh, supports the, the team. They give the rackets, uh, chattels, shoes, uh, uh, clothes. Then you could dream about uh, Panams, about uh, uh, be better. And then you punished me in 2014 and we went and played with you. You beat me, you got revenge, but my legs still hurt from doing the samba. So it's a way of them training. Instead of skipping, you do the samba. Yeah, because uh, actually it's more nice. Uh, there is something about the footwork as well and also for skipping, to uh, change for skipping because the kids doesn't like to, to, to do these movements every time. It hurts, but actually it gets more fun to do samba. Mm -hmm. 